Walking along with a song on your lips Swinging those ten extra pounds on your hips No need to worry about tainted ham Or the mold that changed shape since your last exam It's a groovy day It's a groovy day Welcome back to my journey through prostate cancer. Let's go to the viewer mail. Bob from Tulsa writes, sorry you have cancer. <laughs> Me too, Bob. Is there any chance you could spin off the blue glove covered finger from episode one into a separate series like the Minions or California Raisins? Thanks, Bob. Thanks for writing. Um, we've been looking into a multi-season deal with Paramount Plus. We've been looking to do a project together for a while. So look for maybe a big picture debut in 2024. Um, since I don't have a prostate anymore, oh, <laughs> I gave away the plot development from episode three. Sorry about that. Well, I'm afraid you won't be seeing the uh, glove covered finger anymore in this series. Last time on my journey with prostate cancer, I had found out that my PSA had skyrocketed. It had gone from five to 12 in just five months. That's really concerning. Anything over three is a little worry. So they scheduled me for an MRI and a biopsy. The MRI had an MRI with contrast, and uh, what that does is it allows them to locate masses and possibly diagnose how likely it is you have prostate cancer. Here's me the week before the MRI. I'll have to have three enemas this week. That, that doesn't make me real excited. Now, most of you probably have seen an MRI before, but if not, here's my simulation of the MRI. All right, new result in the patient portal. Anybody figure out what I did wrong there? If you're somebody who spirals, the patient portal is the worst place for you because that's where the bad news goes first, okay? If you're worried about bad news, what you should do is wait for the doctor to be able to frame it and to tell you what the bigger picture is. But I plunged in. After the MRI, you get a DVD and a report. DVD was boring. No bloopers reel, no the making of, just thousands of images. I still can't figure out where the interesting stuff is. The report was another story, gripping. You'll laugh, you'll cry. Evaluation of the central and transitional zone of the gland reveals mild, benign, prostatic hyperplasia. Yay, benign! Wait, there's more! The median prostatic lobe does protrude slightly into the bladder base. Slightly? That's hype, happy doctor talk. That's good. That's, uh, that also explains why I've been peeing funny. But wait, there's more! Large round mass within the right peripheral zone. 30 millimeters by 27 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Pyrads 5. Pyrads. Pyrads 5 is the worst one. Pyrads 5, it's the scale of indication of how big a chance you have of bad cancer. Pyrads 5 is a very high likelihood of clinically significant cancer. Um, I had a big mass on the right and a small mass on the left, pyrad five on the right, pyrad four on the left. Pyrads to the right of me, pyrads to the left of me. So I had cancer. I wanna take the next step. Uh, I'm gonna beat this thing one way or another. I'm probably gonna lose some body parts in the meantime, but uh, um, gonna get through this. And I don't know if I'm going to get through telling my wife that's going to be, and my daughter, that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be a, an ordeal. I think that's going to be a problem. Next up was the biopsy. The biopsy consists of sending a probe up through the back door and up, and it takes 12 tissue samples from the prostate that they can test for cancer. Now, I was knocked out for it, which apparently is a little odd. 
it's not painful, but people say it can get in your head when they hear that loud snap every time there's a sample taken. I've had four enemas and a guy up there with a tube and a clipper. Um, so I just wish the medical establishment would stop using my anus as its own little recreation area. Okay, right prostate two. Miss. <sighs> Left prostate three. Tumor. Right prostate five. Tumor. Left prostate six. Oh, tumor. You cancered my prostate. They analyze the samples to come up with a Gleason score. It's complicated, but this is a simplified summary. One to six, usually wait and see. Seven, borderline. Eight to 10, pretty much do something. And guess what? The results came up on the patient portal. I was an eight, do something. I had, I think, five out of the 12, six out of the 12 samples were a Gleason score of eight. So I've got prostate cancer. Uh, but I think what's next is checking, has it gotten out of the prostate somewhere else? And uh, so there'd probably be PET scan or CAT scan or bone scan or some, some kind of scan. I'm feeling pretty optimistic. Uh, I think it's going to be a pain in the ass. And after we get the scan, we'll figure out whether there's, I don't know, surgery or... Um, uh, testosterone reduction treatment or, um, you know, which I'm going to need anyhow, cause I'm just so freaking virile. Um, they always have said they need to take it back about 10%. If you have prostate cancer and have a Gleason score of eight, that's really not the end of the world. It's not terribly bad news. I'm sure your, your urologist or oncologist will tell you this. Prostate cancer is very treatable in many cases. And there's the rub because there's a little wrinkle in my results. And that little wrinkle is called ductal features. Ductal carcinoma is relatively rare. One to 3% of all cases uh, can travel. Since it's hitting ducts, it actually travels a little more freely out of the prostate, more likely to get outside, uh, more likely to have uh, recurrence, worse long-term outcomes, less um, less likely to respond well to treatments. So these scans that I'm gonna have in, what, two weeks, uh, I think they end up being really high stakes now. Before it was kind of, I thought, based on what the uh, urologist said, that it was, you know, unlikely to be metastasized. But now I'm thinking there's a, there's a fairly good chance. Unquestionably, I'm gonna be getting surgery from, again, everything I could tell, but radiation, chemo are all in the game now. I will tell you, before this, I always had a, a range of possibilities. This was in there, but it was so low probability that I, uh, you know, this was a little bit of a gut punch today. Uh, it's the first time where I've thought, this is, uh, this is gonna definitely um, shorten, my, <laughs> shorten my life. Uh, before when I was looking at it, it was like if it shortened my life it would be okay so I don't live to be 95 I live to be 85 which was kind of my goal anyhow and eh, this could take uh, another decade off of that so or you know at worst more um, and maybe lower my uh, quality of life during that so that's the stuff that I don't like so much the uh, it's been two weeks since my biopsy I got to show you this this is like my <laughs> two weeks from the biopsy and the biopsy they go in and they take 12 chunks of your prostate um, samples and they say may um, you may have a blood in your urine for up to uh, two weeks it's really kind of disturbing because this is after two weeks right um, and it's I don't know I kind of thought it would be over by now I thought I'd be peeing yellow again and this, then there's this, and it's um, it's just a little disturbing because I'm losing blood every time I pee. I assume it's not very much danger or anything like that. But this is, I mean, it's just kind of a surprising color. And it's, it, it tastes less like, like paper cut, more like flesh wound with a little, 
almost a, a medicinal aftertaste. Um, and it might be, you know, I've been taking a whole lot of Tylenol and all that because of the um, discomfort with the whole thing. But that's a little disturbing. I'm hoping over the weekend, this is Thursday, I'm hoping over the weekend we finally shut this down. So that was, uh, it was an infection actually. And it cleared up once it got some antibiotics, but it was a couple of weeks later. So there's a whole lot of blood. Okay. A side note, I don't think I felt good at all uh, in the winter and spring of 2022, from before the diagnosis to surgery. I don't think I felt well. I had nausea, headaches, brain fog, um, fatigue. I'm a gym rat. I like to go to the gym just about every day. I think I might've gone two or three times that entire time from mid-January up till April. Uh, so that was a physical manifestation. I really wasn't terribly stressed, surprisingly. I wasn't terribly mentally stressed, but man, physically, I was getting worn down. I was mainlining caffeine, Advil, Tums, things like that, all spring. Okay, now remember, I had multiple tests in the winter and spring, right? And the first one was finger up and butt. And it showed that it was an irregularly shaped prostate. So that's a bad result. Then I had PSA test and that was a bad result. Then I had the MRI and that showed high like, very high likelihood of clinically significant cancer. That was a bad result. And then I had the uh, biopsy and that confirmed the cancer and in fact said it's a really rare and bad kind of cancer. So I had had bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. I was due for some good news. And guess what? Actually in the bone scan and CAT scan, I got good news. They were clean as far as they could tell. There was no indication of cancer outside the prostate. So that was good and I could schedule the prostateectomy. Next time on my journey with prostate cancer, episode three, rip that sucker out. Also, vacation photos. So I hope to see you then. It's a groovy day. Such a groovy day.